Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. From the people who brought you, humans really are changing the climate. And yes, the climate really is changing, like right now, not in 50 years, already now, comes a bunch of stuff we already knew. This week, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the sixth assessment report from Working Group 3, completing the Triforce of Documents Detailing Climate Change, and finally giving Antonio Guterres the forces of power, wisdom, and courage to defeat- Wait, no, that's not right. The two recent reports from the IPCC detailed what we know about how humans are changing the climate, and what effect this is having on the planet, respectively. This report details how humanity can mitigate or prevent the effects of climate change, and specifically reduce the rate that we emit greenhouse gases. Of course, unfortunately, most of modern society, from growing food to transport to generating electricity, currently involves emitting greenhouse gases, taking carbon from the Earth's crust and putting it into the atmosphere by burning fuels. That's fundamentally what's put us into this situation. But that also means that the climate change problem is one that's quite simple to solve. To quote my PhD supervisor, just keep the carbon in the f ground. That's all we need to do. And this report has some very encouraging news on that front. We are making progress. Average energy intensity has decreased, meaning that for every kilowatt hour of energy used by humans, fewer greenhouse gases are now being emitted. Though there are now more humans and we are using more energy per person, though definitely not evenly, that means that total emissions have increased. But the rate of increase of global emissions has fallen over the past couple of years. And that's not because of the pandemic, but because we now have technology that is low carbon and cost effective. In particular, the report highlights the plummeting cost of electricity generation through solar and wind, and the use of electric vehicles for land-based transport. And it also highlights that climate policy works. Governmental policies designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions have worked to date, and have worked particularly effectively when synergized with subnational policies across multiple sectors. But I was surprised in reading this report by something that could be described as a rotten core to it. Carbon capture. Gretchen, stop trying to make carbon capture happen. It's not going to happen. It's generally accepted that there are some sources of greenhouse gas emissions that are simply unavoidable, such as, for example, creating concrete or using fertilizers on farms. And to counteract this, various technologies have been proposed that would suck carbon out of the atmosphere and drag it back down into the Earth's crust into deep storage, resulting in net zero emissions from these activities. Entirely sensible. However, the report dedicates a fair bit of time to discussing these technologies, and even goes so far as to suggest that they could be used en masse to counteract the burning of fossil fuels, allowing for fossil fuels to be burned for longer. And reading that sentence was, for me, a bit like that moment in The Shawshank Redemption, where the pebble goes through the poster of Raquel Welch. Everything just rang a little bit hollow. Because there is simply no way we can carbon capture our way out of being fossil fuel dependent. Its potential impact is way too small, and it is way too expensive. And to convince yourself otherwise requires pipe dream technology. The only way that we will prevent catastrophic climate change is to stop emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which means stopping the use of fossil fuels within the next few years. So then, why is carbon capture so prominently featured in this report? Well, the corporations that control the extraction and use of fossil fuels are some of the most powerful in all of human history. And of course, they will resist anything that threatens their existence. Cross-reference Exxon knowingly burying evidence of man-made climate change. In particular, fossil fuel companies lobby governments to not enact policies that would effectively wipe them off the books. Something that, to date, has been rather effective. How effective? Well, as this report says, we are currently not going to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by the year 2100, the target that the Paris Agreement set. In fact, with current government policies, we're looking at more like 3.2 degrees of warming by 2100. Even if all pledges made at COP26 were perfectly upheld and turned into policy, we're looking at maybe 1.8 degrees of warming. 
In other words, this report says that government leaders who claim that climate change is a top priority and that they are taking the action necessary to avoid disaster are lying. Their actions just don't match up with their words on a national or on an international level. And to a greater or lesser extent, that policy landscape has been determined by fossil fuel lobbying. So to recap, the report says that we are not even close to limiting global warming to safe levels, and that to do so would require the use of this technology and all these policies to remove fossil fuels from the energy mix. Or you could suck carbon out of the air and carry on a bit like before, burning fossil fuels. It's not going to happen. To even put that on the table, to even consider an alternative to rapidly phasing out the use of fossil fuels in the energy mix is, in my opinion, conceding defeat. And more than that, conceding defeat to a pipe dream. We must emphatically reject the notion in this report, in a part of this report, that carbon capture can somehow cancel out the burning of fossil fuels, at least in the present and the near future. Late century negative emissions, sure, almost certainly necessary. But to believe that that's an option in the present obfuscates meaningful action. And yes, this report emphasises for the first time individual actions, and I'd argue there's some level of moral responsibility to changing your behaviour as an individual. But while being vegan and not flying and driving an electric car will make a difference, it's not how we're going to solve this problem. Government policy is how we're going to solve this problem. The report makes it clear that policy works, especially when it involves diverse actors and across multiple domains. It just needs to be ambitious enough, and crucially, not controlled by the lobbying of fossil fuel companies. So if your country's leader is not taking this issue seriously, if their actions don't match up to their words, and if their policies don't fundamentally remove our dependence on fossil fuel infrastructure, hold them to account. Demand that they change their policies, and if they won't, don't vote for them. Vote for the party that actually promises meaningful change. This report showcases that we have the technology, we have the know-how to fix this problem. But it also bizarrely gives powerful fossil fuel polluters an out with this discussion of carbon capture. It just makes the whole thing ring hollow, especially knowing that it wouldn't work. But make no mistake. The trio of reports we've seen recently are unequivocal. We are causing the climate to change. We are already feeling the effects of this, and we have the means to stop it and to stop burning fossil fuels. And we need to do that fast. In this video, I've focused on the surprising emphasis of this report on carbon capture, but to be clear, there is a ton of material in here that is focused on more meaningful change and what we should be doing. To get more of an overview of that, check out my friends Miriam and Adam who have made a video, or alternatively, if you prefer physical media, check out Drawdown, a book about how we can remove our dependency on fossil fuels with tons of data. Both of those are linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching this one all the way to the end. Here's a link to Adam and Miriam's video and also to my video on the most recent IPCC report from Working Group 2. If you did take something from this, please do share it with other people that you think may find it interesting. And you can also pop it a like. And if you really want to support me, you can also support me over on Patreon, also linked on the screen. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.